previously during the investigation. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome. I'm Sheriff George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. You feel it, Zach? I coughed and warned me about it. <gasps> it's broken. I've been using that one for a long time. Why didn't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. I've never been to a movie theater, though. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. They can't see you if you hold your breath. Hurry. Like this. Cover your mouth. Who are you?
Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, that'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. I really need some coffee. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? Right, Zack? Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh, my. We're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly. I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. 
Zack, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. Police car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department.
So, Zack, about those bonus features in DVDs nowadays? You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there, just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87-minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. I know, Zack. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. That's one fine building for such a small town. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Agent York, we've been expecting you. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room. But I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay, let me know when things are ready. Zach, time goes by slowly in towns like this. There's nothing we can do about it other than enjoy it. You found the key. That's the right one? Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. The victim's name was Anna Graham, age 18. She just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally, 
Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually, I, well, I, I baked them myself. Hmm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes, sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Hmm. Well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women, you might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, 
like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? Uh, George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. So, Emily, tell me, is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zach, there he is, the monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No, nothing, George. I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. It's a pretty big hospital. I guess they want it to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning? No, no. It's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. And that's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. Hi, Fiona. Hello, Agent York. We've come for the results of the autopsy. Is Usha around? Hello, Sheriff. I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. What's he doing? I don't know. He never discusses his work with me. You'll just have to ask him yourself. Thanks. We'll go find him. You're reading again today. Yeah, I've become fond of mysteries recently. The doctor is always telling me to read some dry old medical journal. It's not really fair because he only reads chess magazines himself. So I cover them up like this to keep him off my back. <laughs> I can tell you're working hard then. But I really like that about the doctor, to tell the truth. Hmm. Fiona? I'm sorry, I just got a little... Don't worry. Such feelings are nothing to be ashamed about. I hope things work out for you. Thank you, Agent York. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer. And a card key already set in place. 
The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zack, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usha Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation, 
due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means... She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound, nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Hannah's tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness, and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that, or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usher, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zach, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining, but you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> There's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well... Not particularly. I'm a 
but I am man enough should the moment call for. George, how about you? I'm very passionate. Yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. Sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes Queen. His rook takes your queen, then your knight takes rook, and checkmate. Huh? Oh. Oh, my first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. 